Hi, I'm Dave Watts. Welcome to the seventh part of GSA 200, Writing a OneBox Module. In this session, we'll learn what OneBox modules are, what problems they can solve, and how to build one and configure the GSA to use it. Normally, the GSA indexes data and lets users search against that index. But there are several common cases where indexing data is not the best solution. For example, relational databases can be indexed by the GSA, but they may change very frequently or may have more content than your index allows. To solve this problem, we can use OneBox. A OneBox module is a web service that the GSA can invoke whenever a user performs a search. It can interact with external systems through their APIs, retrieve data through those systems, then return that data back to the GSA. Since no indexing occurs, this does not count as documents against your license. To build a OneBox, you'll need to write a web service that conforms to the OneBox API, uses whatever content API you have to fetch the data, and returns results quickly to the GSA. You can see many examples of OneBox style functionality on Google.com. For example, if you enter a 22-digit number into the U.S. version of Google, you will get a link to the United States Postal Service that provides package tracking information for that number. If you enter the word weather, followed by a location or a U.S. zip code, you will get a snapshot of weather information for that area. The screenshot from Arizona State University shows a one-box module on the GSA. On the ASU site, if you enter a course code into the search box, your first result will be a direct link to that course in the course catalog. All of these examples share some common aspects. They return small amounts of high-value data that may be broadly useful to many users. They may also include images and links to other systems that allow users to get more data if needed. Let's take a look at some examples of OneBoxes on Google.com and then on some GSA customers. So first, I live in Washington, D.C., and I like to see movies. So let's see what's playing at the movies. And as soon as I do that, I get a short list of movies. I get links to trailers. And if I click the links to the movies, it'll take me to a list of theaters. I'd like to see Godzilla. So if I click on that, I can see the showtimes at local theaters. I can then continue clicking through and eventually order tickets. While I'm at the movie theater, I might want to know what to eat. So if I look at potato chips versus popcorn by doing the search calories of chips versus popcorn, I can see the potato chips are much worse for me than popcorn uh, unless I of course add butter to the popcorn. Since it's a long weekend I might want to take a train and visit New York City and I can see the schedule for the trains, uh, the stations, the type of train it is when it departs. If I want to simply perform some math, I'll get a little calculator widget, which will show me that result and allow me to perform more math if I want to. So those are all examples, again, of one boxes on Google.com. But they're also useful in the enterprise. Let's take a look at some GSA implementations of OneBox. The first one we'll look at is the American Chemical Society. If I go to their site and search for any of the elements on the periodic table, the very first search result I get is an entry from the periodic table with links to the entire periodic table if I want to view other elements. So it's just showing me a small amount of information here. We mentioned Arizona State University. 
if I go ahead and search for a course code, the first result I get is a direct link to the course catalog. And if I follow that link, assuming I'm a student, I can go ahead and sign up. When a one box module is defined on the GSA, you will specify a trigger condition that causes it to be invoked. This trigger can be a word, a regular expression, or can simply be configured to run for every search. The GSA will send the user's query to the OneBox program specified by your module. Your program will, in turn, use the query to call your Content Repository's API and fetch data. Your program will then format the data so that it conforms to the OneBox XML specification and return it to the GSA. A OneBox program is a web service that conforms to the OneBox specifications. To build one, you'll need to be able to write a program that can receive HTTP requests, parse those requests, use your content APIs, and generate the XML response. Let's take a look at how a OneBox might work. In this example, our trigger will be the word employee. If a word is used as a trigger, it must be the first word in the query. Searching for employee space Smith will trigger the one box, but searching for Smith space employee will not. Our one box will return a small amount of data. The first two results in the directory showing full names, email addresses, phone numbers, and links to each, and a link to all entries in the directory that match the search. Again, our one box should return small amounts of valuable data that will be useful to people that might not otherwise directly access the directory system. The first step is to write the one box program itself. This program can be written in any programming language that can accept and parse HTTP requests, invoke your content APIs, and generate XML. Once the program has been written, you can create a one box module on the GSA. You can specify the trigger and the URL for the one box module itself. There are actually two kinds of providers, external and internal. Everything we've discussed so far is about external providers. You can use an internal provider as a shortcut to search a collection. Once you've defined a one box module, you can add it to one or more front ends. A single front end can have more than one OneBox module, but remember that OneBox services should only show small amounts of data and will need to run quickly. The GSA will not wait for your OneBox beyond the specified timeout. Here we can see the HTTP GET request made by the GSA. The URL contains several parameters provided by the GSA, including the user's query. We can also see part of the XML response from the OneBox service. The response may contain one or more module underscore result elements, which correspond to individual records. The OneBox module on the GSA will include XSLT to format the results. You can customize this XSLT, which is much smaller than the XSLT used within a front end. The OneBox service can be placed behind HTTP basic authentication. If you do this, you may want to install a certificate on the web server running the service to protect the authentication credentials using HTTPS. The OneBox module can send the search user's credentials to the OneBox service if you're using HTTP basic authentication, LDAP, or forms authentication. Again, if you do this, you may want to use HTTPS to protect the user's credentials. The GSA will log OneBox module requests, and you can view this log to verify that your OneBox service is triggered properly and is returning results or timing out. Finally, Google provides a OneBox simulator that you can use to test your service. To use the simulator, you will need to define a OneBox module on the GSA then export the module definition. The simulator will allow you to test your service from a command prompt and view the raw response from your service. 
The simulator requires that you install Python 2.x. Let's take a look at a one-box module in action. Our one-box module in this case uses a one-box program that's already written. This is a Python program called person.cgi. I'm looking at the Python source code, person.py. The very first thing that this program does is it returns HTTP response headers and an XML beginning, a prologue and part of an XML document. For each result, it returns an appropriate set of fields containing values that it gets when it executes a query. We have a block of code that executes the query, brings back data. So this is a very simple program. If we take a look at the program on the web server, when I go to the URL of the program without any data, it gives me basically an empty data set, but it's returned using this XML format. Any one box program must return XML in this format with the appropriate elements. If I pass some data to it, for example, if I pass employee space Adam, making sure to encode the space with percent two zero. Now it brings back the one atom in its record set. So that's the one box we're going to use. I'm going to go to my GSA and register it. To register a one box, I go to content sources and then one box modules. And then I'll scroll down to the section that tells me to define a one box module. I'll call this module person and then click on create. I'm going to use keywords to trigger this. If I want to provide multiple possible keywords like employee or worker, I will use the pipe to delimit those. Then I'll specify the URL of my program, which I will simply grab from the browser to make sure I don't make a mistake. Now below this, you can see we have two different areas for security, user access control, and security for actually invoking the web service in the first place. So if the web service is behind basic authentication, I would need to provide credentials here for that. And if the GSA is going to send a user's credentials to the web service, I would need to make a choice here. I'm not going to do either of those things. I'm simply going to click on save. Once I've saved my one box, I can go back and edit it. And at this point, I have the ability to edit the XSLT. Uh, before I create the one box, I won't have this link. So if I click on the link, you can see that the style sheet here is actually uh, very simple. So I'll go back to my list of one box modules. Now, if I hadn't already written the program entirely, I could export this module as a local XML file to use with a one box simulator. But since my program is already written, I don't need to bother with that. Now to use this one box, I'm going to need to allow a search front end to use it. So I will go to my list of front ends and I'll choose the default one to edit and then go to the one box modules tab. 
it shows me available and selected module. So I'll select person from the available modules list, click on the arrow, and then save. Now, at this point, I'm ready to run some searches. So I'll go to my default front end, and I'm going to search for the person James. So if I go ahead and just type in the word James and click on the search button, I get back some organic search results, but I don't get back my one box. My one box uses a keyword as a trigger, so I have to use that keyword as the first word in the query. So if I search for employee space James, then I will get back the two entries for James. If on the other hand I search for James space employee, I do not get back the one box at all, just the organic results. If I use the other keyword, worker, then again I do get my results back. If I search for worker followed by 11, it's actually searching phone numbers to bring back everybody whose phone has the country code 11. Now, my one box module is being called and it's very efficient. But if I go back to one box module settings under content sources, we do have a timeout value here. So the GSA is not going to wait beyond that. If I reduce this timeout to something very small, like one millisecond, and then return to my search and search again, you'll notice that a valid search does not return any search results with the one box because the GSA simply isn't going to wait long enough for it to respond. One millisecond is really not long enough for any program, so I'll return that to its previous setting. Now while I'm here, I do want to reiterate, one boxes are not designed to bring back large amounts of data. They're designed to run very quickly. So generally, we do want to keep these values fairly small. We don't want one box data to overwhelm the rest of the page, and we don't want it to overly delay the search. So you might actually want to reduce this somewhat if it's delaying your searches generally. The last thing I'll do is take a look at the log file here. So I can see the searches that were run. I can see the search for James did not trigger. I can see that the search for employee James did trigger. James employee did not. Worker James, worker 11, those searches succeeded. And finally, the last search, I can see timed out. So I can see all of that data in the log. Now again, one boxes do have some best practices. We don't want one boxes to return a lot of data. We want them to run very quickly. And they're especially useful for data that changes very frequently uh, if, or indexing data that you can't afford to store in your index for licensing reasons. So if you have relational databases with millions of records, you have more content than the index would allow, your license would allow, a one box is a great solution for that. This concludes our seventh presentation, writing a one box module. Thank you for watching and make sure to watch the other GSA 200 presentations.